We are Nigantlaka, the indigenous people of this continent. We are still here. 95% of our people were killed by Europeans. 70 to 100 million human lives of our people throughout our continent were killed with the use of smallpox by Europeans. We were killed so that Europeans could steal our lands from us, so that they could steal our wealth from us, and to enslave the remains of our population, so that Europeans could have free land, our land, and to make themselves wealthy. We are the 5% of our people who remain from the Holocaust of our people in the genocide of the 1500s through the 1800s. They did not want to buy our wealth, nor trade, nor to do any of those other honest dealings. They came here as criminals, terrorists, slavers, pirates, as thieves in the night. They stole 100% of our lands, all of our continent, Everything they have is stolen. Everything they have is ours. And we have nothing. We have nothing. We are Nicantlaca, the indigenous people of this continent, the collective owners of this continent. We are still here. We have not disappeared. But it seems as if we have disappeared. We need to speak up, to speak up as educated Nicantlaca, as part of a disciplined, honorable people. They have not killed all of us. We have not totally been destroyed. They have just crippled us and enslaved us. We are not dead in body, just dead as an honorable people, as a free people. But honor can be regained by men and women who want to regain it. We can be liberated from this European slavery, this European hell that they have made for us. We can be educated to be liberated, Nicantlaca educated for liberation, for total liberation. But Nikantlaka education is a lot of work. It is complicated and it is years of study, but it can be done. It is being done now. We, the Mexica movement, do this now. We have gained great insights from our study. We now know the truth of who we are. We know that we have not survived intact, that we have been mutilated, dehumanized, impoverished, enslaved, and left without a history, without honor, and without warriors to defend our people. This was done to keep us as perpetual slaves of the white race. We can change all that. We can liberate ourselves. We are Nicantlaca, the indigenous people of this continent. We are still here. We can change ourselves from ignorant to knowledgeable, from slaves of the white race to a free and independent people throughout our continent, from the north to the south. This is still our land. Our rivers are still ours. Our mountains, our deserts, our valleys, our farmlands, they are still ours. They belong to no one else. The Mississippi, it's ours. The Amazon, it's ours. The Ohio, the Colorado, the Andes, the Appalachians, the Sierra Madre, they are all still ours. All of the beauty and the wealth of our continent is still ours and no one else's. This is not the land 
the continent of the Europeans, no matter how many lies they tell us or how many injustices they commit. The Europeans have Europe. They have Europe to go to. We have nowhere else to go. We are Nicantlaca, the indigenous people of this continent. We will always be here. We have nowhere else to go. We will not be quiet. We will not allow Europeans to continue to claim our continent, our lands, without resistance, without protest, without struggle, without dedicating our lives to liberation. We will not allow uncontested European ownership of our lands, our continent. Not one inch of our lands will we ever surrender willingly. We are Nicantlaca, the indigenous people of this land. We are still here. We are the Mexica movement. We are the warriors upholding the honor of our ancestors, telling truth, demanding justice, demanding liberation. We will not allow theft, the crimes, to continue. Yes, it is 100% theft to claim our lands, to claim our continent, when it is not their land, while we still live. This is all our land, this is all our continent. We have to say this again and again, almost to remind ourselves. We have woken from our sleep of ignorance, of fear, of dishonor. We are the Mexica movement. We do not fear the white race. We do not fear white supremacists. We do not fear the beast of white supremacy, the men and women of evil. We only fear dishonor. We only fear lacking courage. We only fear treason to our ancestors. We are Nicantlaca, the indigenous people of this continent. We are still here. Let us be clear that we are not against the white race as a race, as a people, as fellow human beings, as equals in humanity. We are against the evil people, the white supremacists, the savages, the men and women of empty souls who only wish us harm, who have tried to exterminate us for the last 500 years. We are against white supremacy, against the evil ones who have committed a holocaust against our people, who have killed 95% of our people, 70 to 100 million human lives of our people. These are the evil savages of Europe who came with Columbus and the Spaniards, who came with the English to Roanoke and Jamestown and Plymouth Rock. These were evil, genocidal people who killed our people, stole our wealth, the wealth of our continent, and left us in ruins, in poverty, in disgrace and dishonor, and enslaved us to the white race. We do not believe that all white people are evil, but we also know that all white people have benefited from the evil of their white supremacist brothers and sisters. Yes, we do accept good, decent, honorable, moral white people as having the potential to be part of truth and justice, as was John Brown as there were whites who fought for civil rights, who fought against white supremacy. But there must be full truth in all of this. All white people benefit from the crimes against us, benefit from the ongoing theft of our lands and the theft of our immense wealth that is part of our lands. And that is the problem. White people, good and bad, do not want to give back that which was stolen from us. But justice demands the return of all of our lands, all of our resources, all of our freedom, so that we can live as full human beings. To the good white people, we ask you to put yourselves in our shoes. Would you want anything less than full freedom and all of your lands back, free from foreign occupation? 
Good white people do not speak with selfish interests. Speak from truth and justice. Speak as if you were us. The truth will set you free. Justice and the return of our continent will set us free. We are not against the idea of democracy or of a representative government. That is the way of our ancestors. We had that before the Europeans ever had it. We are also not against the Constitution, nor do we seek violence or terrorism against white supremacists and not against innocence of any race. We only seek truth and justice through education for the liberation of our people. We are against white supremacists, against the genocide of our people, against oppression, terrorism, and all of the evils of racism, the evils that have destroyed our people for the last 500 years. The people of evil, the people of white supremacy, is what we are against. We want law and order, truth and justice. We want unity for all of our people from Alaska to Tierra del Fuego. We do not want to be 500 weak nations exploited and enslaved by white supremacy. We want to be a people united as Nicantlaca. We want a peaceful transition to total liberation for our people. We do not want to be perpetual foreigners on our own lands, on our own continent, and forever to be the slaves of the white race, of the white settlers, the squatters, the illegal occupiers on our continent. We do not want to be kept in poverty by being deprived of the vast wealth of our land, of our continent. All of that wealth is ours. We do not want to keep suffering the evils of white supremacy, the exterminating evil of genocide. We will not allow ourselves to become extinct. We are Nicantlaca, the indigenous people of this continent. We are still here. We will struggle for the total liberation of our continent until we are a free people once again. Those of European descent who do not want us to be free, who do not want us to have what they have stolen from us, who do not want us as equals in the nations of humanity, to those European descent people, they should deport themselves to Europe, where they will be happy amongst the Europeans, in a European land, in a European continent, in the full indecency of white supremacy. Liberation will come to be for our people. Now that we are waking, liberation will be ours in 50 years, in 100 years, or be it 200 years, but it will be ours. We just need to educate our people for liberation and to educate the decent white people of our planet, educate everyone for liberation. Liberation from white supremacy that now controls the world we live in. We are the Mashika movement and we stand speaking these truths, these demands for justice. We live this truth with our actions of education and protests against injustice, against white supremacy. We are Nicantlaca, the indigenous people of this continent. We are still here. Let no one deny us our right to be a free people. Let no one deny us our lands and their wealth. Let no one deny us our right to be anywhere on our continent. Let no one deny us truth or justice. Let no one deny us our full humanity. This is the truth we live. We are Mexica movement. We are Nicantlaca, the indigenous people of this continent. We are still here. We will always be here. My name is Olin Tezcalipoca. I am the director of the Mexica movement. The overall theme for today is organizing. History. 
and the need to participate in confronting white supremacy in order to take disciplined steps for the liberation of our people. Our emphasis is on education in order to properly confront and defeat white supremacy with the goal of continent-wide liberation for our people. Our plan for liberation has short-term and long-term goals. We will speak of both of them today. The sub-theme of the talk for today is to present an understanding that the Phoenix battle, the Arizona battle that is going on today in this city of Phoenix and throughout Arizona is only a tiny part of white supremacy, a tiny part of the overall problems of white supremacy and the enslavement of our people. We are enslaved to the interests of colonial settlers on our continent. Yes, colonial settlers, that is what they are. That is what they have been for 500 years. We need to straighten out our heads out of this slavery that our minds are in. We need to see the bigger picture of colonialism and genocide. You need to know those two words, colonialism and genocide, as if your life depended on it, as if your humanity depended on them because they do. You need to understand both of these concepts. We can't get lost in the emotion and the victories that will come in the months and years ahead, victories against white supremacy in Arizona. White supremacy is going on all over the United States, even in Mexico, and the rest of the lands of our continent. It has been going on for 500 years. This battle in Arizona will only come and go, but we will all still be fighting white supremacy to the last hours of our life. The evils of white supremacy of the present and of the past are all tied together with the colonialism that began in 1492. We will still have to confront the evils of colonialism and genocide that are at the ugly, rotted heart of white supremacy in order to achieve total liberation for our people. And we need to confront our own ignorance, the evils of our own colonized minds. To be clear, I'll define the most important terms. Organizing. Organizing simply means gathering people in an orderly fashion to achieve a goal. Our goal is the liberation of our people. White supremacy. White supremacy refers to white people who think that they are superior to all other races. If you don't know history, you might actually believe the white lies that whites are superior with atomic bombs and jets, TV, cars, electricity, and all of the rest of the modern world. But when you know the whole truth, you will see that no race is superior to any other race. No sex is superior, no color is superior, and that we are all just part of the human race. We are all just part of one human race. Genocide. Genocide is the intentional attempt to exterminate a people by killing them or by nullifying their existence by having them as virtual slaves to another race or culture, as is the case with our people on our continent. Colonialism. Colonialism is where a foreign people invade and enslave a population for the purpose of depriving them of their ownership of their lands and its wealth, while at the same time enslaving the population to serve the labor needs of the settler, squatter, foreign population. Pretty simple. It's been the history of our people for the last 500 years. History. History is the uh, past actions of a people that are recorded or memorized to provide a people with their proper sense of accomplishments, their heroes and that pride that will motivate and instill the creativity to continue with that record of achievement. 
It provides a people with the courage to protect their nation and their people. These last two terms, genocide and colonialism, are the terms that most affect the Nican Placa today. We have to remember that genocide has a lot, a lot of ways beyond just killing people. It's a, a, a way of destroying a people. The way I'm speaking to you in English, the way we're in in an environment where we're controlled in our thoughts. That's part of genocide and colonialism where everything is controlled in our lives by a foreign group of people. Mexica movement. I want to give you an introduction to who we are as an organization, to the importance of knowing history, and to the reasons why our people have failed over the last 500 years. We need to understand why we have failed to rid ourselves of the European colonialism and why we are still suffering today under white supremacy. Mexica Movement is an organization that has a long record of educating our people on the true Nican Tlaca identity, the true history as Nican Tlaca, as indigenous people, as the original people, the collective owners of this continent, but we only started our task in 1992. We formally became an organization in 1993. The origins of our organization came out of what was known as the Chicano Movement. The Chicano Movement period was in the 1960s. The Chicano Movement is dead. No matter what people tell you, it has been dead for 40 years. But the core ideas of the Chicano Movement helped us found the first awakenings of our Nican Tlaca heritage. We kept the idea of resistance to assimilation and genocide. We removed the mestizo pride component. We removed the limits of the Spaniard boundaries, which was referring to the Southwest. We have now expanded the knowledge base to the 6,000 years of civilization that we've had on this continent, to the 50,000 years that we have been here on this continent. And we've expanded it to the 500 years of crimes of Europeans, that knowledge base. I want to give you an overall history of our, of our 500 years of mostly failure at confronting white supremacy in order to understand how confronting and defeating white supremacy has been so difficult. But before all of this, I want to begin on a personal note. Since I am older than all or most of you in this room, I want to share with you my experience, my experiences in success and failure, the success and failure of our people over the last 50 years. I began my study of our people's history at the age of 12 when curiosity had me with an itch that needed scratching. I needed to know who my people were. I could not go on without knowing. I felt that I was going to die if I didn't know who my people were and what had happened to us. How did we end up in such disgrace, such poverty and such ignorance? Even at 12, I knew there was something wrong in how our history was being told to us. So I began by going to libraries and reading books and magazines, old National Geographics, anything that was about our people. Luckily, my father was very supportive in all of this over the years. My father had been taking us to Mexico every year since I can remember. I have a picture of me at three years old at El Castillo in Chapultepec. Me dressed up as a charro in San Juan de los Lagos at Teotihuacan when I was 15. I looked forward every year to traveling. Later when I turned 18, I began my solo travel and traveled to the sacred sites of our ancestors. And over the next 42 years after that first solo time, it seemed that I have been traveling all my life in search of knowledge. 
I have had adventures in travel and learning for which I am most grateful to our Creator. Travel and knowledge have been the magic in my life. They have made life worth living. My life has been one of learning and sharing what I learn. I have seen beautiful things for which I am most grateful and ugly things that I wish I had never experienced. But those experiences, the good and the bad, have been the sum total of my life. What has brought me to be in the mind of liberation that I have today, in the Nikantraka mind of the Mexica movement. My family is mostly from Coahuila and Texas. I am a descendant of Purepecha on my mother's side and of the Texas and Coahuilteco tribes on my father's side from both sides of the Rio Grande, Rio Bravo. When I was a kid, I got used to seeing signs in Texas that read, no Negroes or Mexicans allowed. Most of you have never seen those signs, but some of you have maybe felt those signs. I saw the hate of white people for our people walking in the towns of Texas, a hate for our people for just existing, for walking down the street, Anglo-Saxon hate. Over the years I got to see the Latin European hate for our people, the hate of the white supremacists, Criollos, the Spaniards, the Cubans, the white supremacists who are Latinos the Hispanics, the real Latinos, the real Hispanics. My family moved to LA when I was five years old. I grew up with books and newspapers and magazines in our house, but not much on our history or heritage. My dad was a, was a college graduate of Monterrey, Nuevo Leon. I had the guidance of his experiences, his dignity. He tried to teach me what he knew but it was limited, and finding materials on our history looked impossible. There seemed to be none, no history worth mentioning. Therefore, I thought there was no real history beyond Pancho Villa, Zapata, La Revolución, Benito Juarez, something vague about Aztecs and the arrival of Spaniards. All the rest was fuzzy. But everything changed when I was 16. A civil rights bill was being passed after decades of African descent people fighting for their rights. We gained from their struggle. In the late 60s, the Chicano movement was born out of the disproportionate casualties of our people in Vietnam. We were finally protected in our rights, our newly given rights of non-discrimination. Out of that awakening, we embraced the mestizo mentality with a focus on what we called our Indio heritage. We got rid of the Mexican-American label and embraced Chicano, a politically aware, slightly historically aware, a mestizo-minded view that had courage to confront white supremacy. We won a few victories. Some people died in protests, some were shot, others arrested, and most of us who were involved in protests learned a lot about organizing. We also learned about police infiltrators and traitors. We learned that there were opportunists in our community that used protests for political purposes. I saw people who were once my heroes turned into vendidos and politicos. After a while, everything of protest was destroyed by traitors, politicos, and those who just gave up the fight. That was the end of the Chicano movement. I thought the battles were over once everyone gave up. And I thought that we would somehow continue to make progress in 
the American way of what our people and the Marxists called imperialism and capitalism. The Marxists blinded us to colonialism and genocide, to our history, and to Nicantlaca identity. They fed us Che and communism instead of Zapata and Tecumseh and Tupac Amaru and Cuauhtémoc and Sitting Bull and other Nicantlaca heroes. They blinded us from seeing that Marxists were also white supremacists. We could not see that Che was a racist against blacks in his writings, against our people, and that he thought whites were superior. The Marxists shamed us from looking into our Nicantlaca heritage with that savages and nothing but human sacrifice lies. Those were the lies of the communists, but they were the lies of the capitalists, the lies of white supremacy. I went to college, got a degree, got a good job as a film editor, and continued studying our heritage, and continued traveling and learning. Little by little, information started to trickle in on our history in the early 80s. But also, the racism started to get ugly again. White supremacists didn't like us as their equals. But it also became popular to become a vendido. Hispanics started to become popular. Latinos started to become popular. People bragged about being vendidos. I saw little by little our people giving up again because they were not threatened like we were when we were being sent off to Vietnam where we saw the statistics showing that we were being overkilled in Vietnam. That got us angry. That was the reason for the birth of the Chicano movement, the real reason for the birth of the Chicano movement. Then I saw how our people lost their will to fight injustice and they went back into the passive slaves of Anglos and Spaniards, the Spaniards of Mexico, the Spaniards of Miami, los cubanos, los gusanos. We got back on our knees to white supremacy. I saw how the Cubans took Telemundo and Univision from us and took it to Miami to make our people more Hispanic, more Latinos using their control of TV, radio, magazines, newspapers, all media, all Spanish language media, to make us more ignorant than we already were, to tighten the chain on our slave minds. By the time the 80s came around, I saw the need to confront racism of the Anglos and of the Criollos the ones in Miami and the ones in Mexico City, but almost no one wanted to help unless they had been discriminated and it had happened to them personally. At the same time, there were ongoing racist sh police shootings, job discrimination, so I got involved stronger. I joined up with civil rights groups of African descent people and some of our people who fought injustice. I gave up film editing and joined Hermana Mexicana, an immigrant rights organization, as a director of public relations, and worked to lobby for the 1986 amnesty bill. I lobbied in Washington, D.C. and in Sacramento, and we were successful with the amnesty. I learned more about organizing. But Hermana Mexicana had its problems of internal racism, so I left and later became director of communications for SEIU, a big union that organized government workers, nurses, horse track racing employees, and other jobs. I made videos for them and organized and taught people how to deal with the media. I realized from learning to organize and teaching how to organize and writing propaganda for civil rights and immigrant rights and the rights of workers, I could use all of that experience to deal with the problems of our people 
as indigenous people, I had not yet learned the concept of Nicantraca in 1992. I decided to set up what eventually became the Mexica movement and to invite people to help in forming the beginnings of what I saw as the liberation of our people. Over the last 20 years, I have seen the fear, the cowardice of our people when it comes to facing the truth of the last 500 years, to the truth of white supremacy. I have seen protests turned into opportunists for people who want to run for political office. I have seen Chicano studies turned into Latino studies and Hispanic studies. And Mecha turned into an Hispanic organization of opportunists and vendidos. I have seen Marxists and anarchists destroy every attempt we have made to confront injustices against our people. I have seen so-called Aztec danzantes dance with crosses of Jesus and portraits of Mary and bless with copal, the American flag. And they call themselves Latinos. I have seen all the reasons why we fail, why we are betrayed, why our people are so passive, so, pe so fearful, so cowardly. All that our people can do is to make excuses. Their excuses for their cowardice is to turn everything into a big joke or just watch TV, do drugs, become sports fanatics or anything that will stop them from being thinkers, from being a people of honor and dignity, from being a people of knowledge and courage. This is what I have experienced. People hate me for speaking this way, for pointing out our failures, but they never call me a liar. I have spoken of the racial rape of our people, our race being raped by the white race, and how that rape does not define our people, and that it is only a scar upon our people. But there are people who want to celebrate that rape with nuestra raza, nuestra raza cósmica, and I am a proud mestizo. Dia de la Raza is celebrated on October 12th, Columbus Day. We celebrate the rape of our people, the destruction of our civilizations. We are too ignorant to even know it, to understand that we are being made fools. I have also spoken of cultural castration where we are no longer able to reproduce ourselves culturally, not in an authentic way. That also bothers people. Men hate the word castration. Others say, I am not a scar. I am proud of both of my bloods. They speak this as if they know what they are speaking of. They do not. Do they know that Spaniards kill 95% of our people, 70 to 100 million human lives of our people all across our continent? And they still want Spaniard pride. Que pinche locura. The Spaniards laugh at our continued ignorance. They think we are silly creatures. Look in the internet and see what Spaniards think of us. They are the KKK, the neo-Nazis. They are even angry why we call ourselves Latinos and Hispanics. Esos indios no son hispanos ni latinos. And we respond, si, sí, si, sí, somos. Ignorance of history has us speaking like ignorant fools, like clowns, like a people without dignity. 
but all is not hopeless. A full knowledge of our heritage is what will liberate us from the slavery in which we exist. This knowledge needs to go out to the whole world. It will free the world. It will also free white people from their lies. We need to speak facts and not ignorance, with courage and not cowardice. We need to speak the fact that we have been on this continent for 20 to 50,000 years or more. And that is longer than the 40,000 years that Europeans have been in Europe before they came out of Central Asia. The Germanic tribes have only been in Europe for 3,000 years. They don't even know that. There is also the fact that this whole continent belongs collectively to us as Nicantlaca, that we have a duty to be united and free as a Nicantlaca nation, and that our Nicantlaca nation is not an impossibility, not impossible to have as a united and free nation from Alaska to Tierra del Fuego. And there is also the fact that we need to make it clear to ourselves and to the European settlers that we are still under occupation, still in colonialism, still in a process of genocide, and that we need to confront white supremacy, that we need to confront colonialism, we need to confront this genocide. White supremacy has to be destroyed completely, even when that white supremacy is coming out of our own people. We need to understand that we are a people who have 6,000 years or more of being a civilized people with civilizations like those in Peru. Yes, Peru is Nicantlaca. They are part of our people. We are part of them. Our collective civilizations go back to at least 3700 BC. That is an older civilization than Egypt and way older than anything in Europe. These are new facts that just came out over the last 10 years. We had cities with art, architecture, schools, hospitals, astronomy, observatories, the most accurate calendar in the world, writing systems, the mathematical concept of zero before anyone in the world and agriculture and foods that now produce 70% of the foods in the world. There's more. We had a theology and philosophies that are the equals or the greater of any in the world. Our societies were democratic, egalitarian meritocracies that had a concern for the whole of society over the selfishness and individuals as in the case, as is the case of the Europeans on our continent today. We were not a perfect people, nor were we savages, as has conveniently been portrayed by Europeans. We were already bathing when the Europeans didn't even understand the concept in 1492. We had mandatory education for males and females when Europe only provided education for male elites of the dictatorships that they called kingdoms and principalities, the royalties. We were in the process of unity, forming alliances, confederations, and other forms of cultural and political union when the Europeans began invading our world. The Europeans raped, robbed, massacred, destroyed our world and its accomplishments. They took the wealth of our lands, killed the majority of our people with their cowardly weapon of smallpox. They put the 5% of the remains of our population into slavery. We were informal slaves of the Europeans for almost 300 years. After that, we became the slaves without chains that we are today. All of those centuries of slavery psychologically damaged our people and our culture. Rape and oppression mutilated our humanity. Slavery and rape 
are the reason why we are so many Garcias and Martinez's and Gonzalez's and Rodriguez and all the rest. The same way that African descent people are Jacksons and Jeffersons and Washingtons and Jones and Smith, etc. Africans were slaves on plantations. We were slaves in haciendas and the mines. Africans were also raped. They were raped by the evil slave masters. We were raped by our evil slave masters. So don't be taking so much pride in your Spanish last name. That is the name of a slave. That blood, what little there is of European blood is the blood of rape. And that name is the name of an evil slave master, a racist rapist who forced his Christ, his Christianity on us. We are slaves even now. Most of us don't even know it. We are slaves in our names and our languages, English and Espanol, in the blood raped and chained to us, the scar with which we live. The Jews were raped by Russians and Germans and others. They ignore the rapes and don't let it be anything other than a scar from centuries of rape. The same happened with the Turks and the French and the Italians and other people around the world. They are not crippled by that history, by the rape of foreigners. They do not celebrate invasions and rapes. We are the only ones that celebrate the blood rape. Even the 30 to 50 percent of us who have no European blood, we celebrate the rape of our people. Over the last 500 years, we have tried to fight the white supremacists who invaded our lands. We failed. We failed because we thought they were rational, moral, honest, civilized people like us. We were wrong. They executed our leaders kidnapped and enslaved our people, raped our population, used smallpox to kill the majority of our people. They stole everything from us. History, identity, freedom, pride, honor, and the wealth of our lands. Evil and smallpox, racism and immorality, all had their part in our defeat and our enslavement. But there is one part that we do not put enough emphasis on. There was a treason. Hatue, our first warrior leader against the European invasions in the Caribbean, was not defeated by the Europeans. He was betrayed by traitors amongst our own people. Guatemoc was executed because he was betrayed by our people. Tupac Amaru was betrayed, Sitting Bull was betrayed, Crazy Horse was betrayed, Zapata was betrayed. The list is long and shameful. The traitors are amongst us. The opportunists are amongst our people. They have added to our enslavement. There are traitors and cowards amongst our people today. Some join the Minutemen. Others speak racism against Nicantlaca heritage. Others are politicians who toy with our identity and our history. They put us on the slave labels of Hispanic and Latino. They tell us that our past doesn't matter and that being Americans is the only thing that matters. We do not confront those traitors as a people. Mexica movement has confronted traitors like Eddie Olmos Gregory Nava and other traitors. They are in fact white supremacists, these traitors. The white supremacists of our own people. Yes, white supremacy is evil, as is colonialism and the genocide of our people. But white supremacy is the most evil, the most monstrous when it comes from our own people. Treason and cooperation with injustice and genocide are evils of the lowest form for any people. 
We are now kept in slavery more by tradition of fear and cowardice, by the continuation of the vendidos leading our people into more slavery and more and more genocide because we are ignorant of the truth of our history and the reality of our slave condition. So quite simply, the solution for liberation is education, Nicantlaca education, education that is in our interests and that leads to a total liberation from European occupation. We are not seeking assimilation, not partial liberation. Those are just extermination for our people. We are working for total liberation. How much freedom do you want? How much of our land should we demand? 10%, 50%, or 100%? How much of our humanity should we demand? Any dignified, honorable people will always demand 100% liberation, 100% of their humanity back. This may sound impossible to us now, but once we are Nicantlaca educated and disciplined and united, it will be a very natural thing to do to regain the full humanity of our people, to regain the full control of our lands, our continent, and their vast wealth, the wealth that is being stolen from us every day. In our minds, this is a dream. But every people who became free started with a dream and then a plan and then actions and then finally liberation, freedom. But with us, we have the crippling that Europeans have done to our minds and even to their own minds with the thoughts that we are forever doomed to serve the white race that we will never be free from slavery to the white race. It is totally doable, our liberation. But we have to be educated as Nicantlaca. We have to drop all of the ego, materialism, drugs, and all of the other shit that is now part of our fake white culture, our mestizo culture, our Latino American culture. We have to have an educated and courageous leadership, a collective leadership. And we have to be unselfish and patient and disciplined and organized, united with intelligent, courageous, creative, dedicated Nicantlaca liberators. Yes to the protests against injustice in Arizona. Yes, to confronting white supremacy all across our continent. Yes, to confronting the vendidos and the opportunists and the politicos who do nothing for our people. Bring them down when they do not serve our people. Down with the vendidos and the politicos. The solution is education that teaches us the importance of knowing of how long we have been on our continent, which is 50,000 years or more which is longer than Europeans have been in Europe. The solution is knowing that we have been civilized as Nicantlaca with cities and towns and agriculture for 6,000 years or more, which is longer than Europeans and way longer than anything in Europe, which only dates back to about 800 BC in civilization, while findings in our civilization go back to 3700 BC. And the, the archaeologists are finding older and older sites on our continent. Solution is to know all of our accomplishments, to know of the pride of our people, accomplishments in astronomy, mathematics, calendar making, accomplishments in building great civilizations. But what happened to us? Who stopped our achievements, our genius, our creativity, our freedoms? It was the European invasions, genocide, and the enslavement of our people. That is what happened. The solution is in 
not only knowing of our accomplishments, but also in knowing of the crimes of the Europeans, the massacres, the rapes, the theft, the killing of 95% of our population. So here we are today with Arizona and its Nazi laws and white supremacy continues, its genocide against our people, not just in the USA, but in Mexico and all of our continent. White supremacy continues its Indian removal of our people. White supremacy continues its oppression, terrorism, and its shameless immorality against our people. So yes, let us confront white supremacy here in Arizona. And there are other states planning the same white supremacist actions using laws like Nazi Germany did to exterminate Jews and gypsies and other non-Germanics. This is racism. This is racist hate. This is a plan to remove and to exterminate the true owners of this continent. The sooner we understand all of this, the sooner we will wake up out of the poison that is white supremacy. But let's not get fooled by USA white supremacy. Look at Mexico and all of the other white supremacists control Latin nations on our continent. White faces on TV and in Espanol and magazines all celebrating whiteness and teaching us to hate ourselves. It really is no better than the Arizona KKK monstrosity. Look at Mexico and its southern border with Guatemala, how it deals with our people crossing the, the fake borders. Look at the white supremacy of Spanish language television and its programming and the ignorance of, and racism it promotes. Look at our families. Look at our white supremacist mestizo culture. Look into your own heart and mind and be honest about the white supremacist evil that has been planted into all of our minds. It is there like a poison that we cannot remove. It is the same even for white people who are white, white supremacists. It is an evil poison that mutilates their humanity. Mexica movement is about helping with that first step of ridding us of the self-hate, the poison of white supremacy. And we work to the final end where we accomplish total liberation from white supremacy everywhere on our continent. So with this introduction to the reality that is the world, this white supremacy 101 as it affects us as Nicantlaca, we will continue with these classes in education for liberation. We will continue this for the rest of our lives. So a lot of times when I'm talking to people, um, I'll explain to them about the rape and things like that. Uh, one of the first responses I get from a lot of people is, oh, but my mama was from Spain. She wasn't a racist. How do you counter that? Mi abuelo vino de España. One of the biggest fucking lies that our people spread. Okay? You we hear it again and again. I don't really know you all that well. We know ourselves a little bit. How is it that in your family and my family and other pe people I meet all in California and Arizona and Texas, la misma pinche mentira. How does it come about? Okay? That, first of all, it's about 99% of a lie. Okay? Oh, because somebody is muy bueno, is that it? I've heard these stories. Oh, es que, es, es que mi, mi abuelo vino de España. ¿Y, y ¿De qué parte de España? Then uh, the, 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 the lie stops. And say, bueno, pues, es que se miraba como un español. Oh, se miraba como un español. Oh. Pero ¿dónde era? Oh, oh, he was from Guanajuato. Pues no que era de, de, que your grandfather came from Spain. The thing is, you've got to confront on the, first on, on that part of it. Because if every, every Mexicano y Centroamericano and all Nicantlaca who claims that same pinche mentira, there will be not one, one fucking Spaniard left in Spain. Just think about it. But that's also about self-hate. I hear the other part of it. Yeah, I may look like a fool, but let me raise my pants like you can see I'm a little lighter. It's kind of related. But let's take the other angle of it. I ran across this 
uh, brother and sister. And they were going on with this. And they were going on about how their grandmother came from Spain. And I looked at them, darker than me, and they're giving me this story. And they went at it. They were insisting that they could prove it. And it turned out that their grandmother really did come from Spain. Era una gitana. Okay? A gypsy. A dark person from Spain. But they were trying to give the impression, I'm white. In case you don't know, gypsies are not white. Okay? That's one example where actually they were, they, but they insisted they wanted to prove it because they, they had met their grandmother and she was from Spain. But they're saying, it gets to the thing of, okay, my grandfather came from Spain and it wasn't, it wasn't a rape. He came here and he fell in love and blah, blah, blah. Well, the rape comes from the, pan, the fact that what the hell was he coming onto our land for? There is something called the Stockholm Syndrome, where someone is kidnapped and they're being held for a long time and after they get to know each other and then there's... Uh, uh, sex involved and it's not rape but by law it is rape from the point that the person was kidnapped and basically they were convinced to surrender sexually and there's a similar thing that's basically accepted this is over a period of centuries they have no business being here to begin with in 1492 or in 2010 and to say, oh yeah, but it was, it, it was uh, not forced. It is forced. Just because mentally you can say, oh, well, it was a, a marriage. It fue en la iglesia. Blah, blah, blah. It's, still, it's still an ongoing rape. It's too intellectual for most of our people to understand that. So, I don't know if I fully understand, uh, understood the way you were. Yeah. And, and, but, but it still gets back to the thing of that they want to defend the Spaniards. They want to defend the Spaniards at every... They, they kill 95% of our people. Well, that's a long time ago. <laughs> they stole 100% of our land and they're still profiting from it. Yeah, but do we got to keep on chillones and crying about it forever? Do you know of any other people that talk like that? who celebrate rape, who when you present to them facts, that gets back into what I was talking about, psychological damage that has been done to us. We, we don't fully realize, it's kind of, here, here's one, of, what's one of our favorite expressions? Un hijo de la chingada. That was the expression the Spaniards used against us. And we behave as if we're Spaniards. As, we don't even think about, ¿Qué es un hijo de la chingada? ¿Cuál chingada are we talking about? And why are we, why are we talking like that? We talk like we're Spaniards. And this isn't just the hueros that talk of our people. This is, uh, a full blood will talk like that. So it's a lot about psychological damage that has been done to our people. We're not even conscious of it. We, 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 we speak, we speak uh, in pendejadas, one after another, after another, and we think it's, que chistoso somos, verdad? You know, there's a, a lot of habits that we have, que, que son habits of slaves, they're, they're, they're habits of, of an ignorant people, they're, they're habits of a dishonored people, of people who have no warriors, to keep the discipline, to keep the honor. In case you didn't notice, we don't have warriors to defend us, but to keep discipline amongst our people. So there are, there are a lot of different things that we're not fully conscious. ¿Por qué estoy hablando este pinche idioma de español? Or why am I speaking this fucking English language? I'm enslaved, even in the language. We're not conscious of that. Oh, but ahora que estoy hablando español, ahora sí soy. ¿Soy qué? Un pinche esclavo de los españoles. See? So it's a, it is about shaking up our people. But, you, but just shaking them up, pues se te van a encabronar. You know, you, you got to give them the knowledge. But part of the thing is there is, there is a resistance to even 
reading a knowledge, you know, it's something that's going to save our people. That's why we're doing this, again, with videos. We're doing it with graphics. We're doing, we know it's very difficult. We don't have a multi-billion dollar budget. We're doing it with what we can. And the reality, there's heavy resistance. Our people have been poisoned in their minds. I speak, I am poisoned right now, even as I'm speaking to you. That's how bad this is. So imagine those of our people who know nothing of all this. Yeah, I can get angry and go confront Eddie Olmos. You're a big fucking vendido. We've confronted him again and again and again. But I can be honest enough to say, you know what? Who made him that way? But we still confront him. But to be honest about what made up all of, all of this monstrosity, the, the, the terrorism that goes on in our communities with gangs, the drugs that are in our community, who brought all of that? If you look at the, the whole gang culture, that's totally, totally Europeans got nothing to do with our people. But you try talking with somebody who's part of gang culture, they'll argue with you out of ignorance. In the same way, they'll argue, my grandfather came from Spain. They'll argue with, que hijos de la chingada son esos? Que tu muy español que te crees? You know, there's all of these different things. And guess who's laughing at us? Guess who's laughing? Los criollos, los españoles, the people who have the wealth of our continent, the people who are profiting from all of this. I am in, in carcajadas. <laughs> Those funny monkeys, we got them. We got them. We got them good. And every time we work to liberate our minds, the biggest resistance comes from our own selves. We've, we've fed this information to our people and get them to at least understand it. And, they, and people do understand it, and then they go back into the gang culture, or they go back into the drugs, or they go back into making money, it's all about money, or they go back into, yeah, it doesn't matter, I'm just going to go out and have sex and get drunk and, and, and watch a, a sports, uh, the, 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 los Lakers and the, los Dodgers, and blah, blah, blah. that's all that really matters in life. It's a pretty ugly thing. It's a pretty ugly thing. And when we speak this hard, hard truth, a lot of people get very angry. And why are they angry? Because it's a lie? No, because la mera mera verdad les duele. And it's difficult, and that's why we have to be patient with each other, because every one of us is poisoned. Every one of us, you know, we've made, how do you think I know a lot of all this stuff? You know, I never call myself Latino or Hispanic, but the mestizo thing, that was a big part of how I was raised. You know? And that's how I understand that mentality. I know it from experience. Yeah, I, I know, I know the, the, todas las cancioncitas, that's what they mestizo pride and all that shit. So a lot of this, it, it is about reality. This is going to be very difficult. Look at us. We got, can anybody think of any, any, anyone out here, whether it's uh, here in Phoenix or in Mexico or East LA or whatever, as far as an organization. I mean, we're, we're a tiny organization. But do you know anybody who's out there representing our people? Anybody in this room know? What, oh, but there's only 5,000 of us, right? It's millions of us. How about even in Mexico? Anybody who's speaking for Nicantlaca, indigenous people? Oh, the, gee, there were the Zapatistas and Comandante. You know, what, what, what was that all about? Anybody still believe in that shit? It was a Marxist thing. It happened. And good, our people were trying to revolt against something wrong. But what happened? They were feeding them all this Marxist stuff. And for those of you who didn't see, they were making the little dolls. Did any of you ever get those little dolls Zapatistas were making? where they were, Our people, our Nicantraca people, were putting blue eyes on the little dolls. So... Did our people in Chiapas learn anything about themselves? Are they really free? Some of you probably read a lot of stuff about Zapatistas and all this, pero que paso? They got worldwide attention. 
You had celebrities going down there. Blah, 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 blah. Was there really any real solution being offered there? It's part of the history of failure of our people because when we don't get to the core of knowledge of who we are and to confront this as colonialism and white supremacy, we will fail, we will fail, we will fail again and again. And even in this that we're talking here, we've got a lot of young people in this room. You're going to be very old people at one point, and it's still going to be a struggle. But what we want to do, for those of you who are very young right now, with the children who are going to come after, after this, it's going to be even tough for them. But with each generation, we want to purify and purify until we get that poison out of the minds of our people. It is a lot. It's a lot to ask because who's, who's going to provide the guidance? We don't have the money to deal with it. We don't have a power structure and, because we're slaves. We're, we're slaves in our minds. We're slaves in every way you can think of. But hey, we can walk, out, walk around here. Nobody's going to. Where's the chains? You don't need chains anymore. That's, that's the ugly part of it. You don't need chains for this type of slave. I do have another question. Another uh, response I've gotten from other people is um, that it's people are trying to pass it off as a class war instead of a race war. Yeah, that's that's Marxist bullshit. It's part of the that's Marxist white supremacy. That's what that is. And I heard that. I heard that since the '60s. It's a class. It, I read Marx, I read Communist Manifesto, I read Das Kapital and all that. That's from a white point of view. That's an, an issue of what was going on in Europe. And they're trying to, in the same way, oh, you guys had gods and you're, you're god of this. It wasn't about gods. They're trying to bring their whole class struggle of Europe and bring it over here. It's not about class struggle. It's about white supremacy. It's about racism. It's about the stealing of our lands. It's ongoing colonialism. But how many people are going to understand that? But how do we explain it to the people about the class if it's not a class struggle? The, the problem is, if you're, if you're somebody who insists on class struggle and che, ya está la victoria, those people, they're never going to change. Ya están encabronados con che, in con Marxism, they will not change. Tell you from a 60-year-old guy who's been dealing with hardcore Marxists. They're not really interested in facts. It's just Marxist dogma. They're more interested in convincing you. Because you can, you can explain to them, you can show them pictures, you can show them proof and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, yeah, but that doesn't matter. What I'm telling you is, with some people, facts don't matter. Because they're so brainwashed, whether it's Marxism or it's capitalism. They're both white supremacist notions that have nothing to do with our people. And this whole thing about class struggle and... <sighs> Marx was a, a racist. Read Marx. I've, read, I've actually read Marx. You know what? I've actually read the Bible. Yeah. I'm one of those fanatical people that wanted to know. I read the Bible multiple... There's a lot of ugly things in the Bible. Some ugly things in what Marx read. I'm talking beyond... Uh, Communist Manifesto. He was a fucking racist. How, how, how was he a racist? I'll give you one example. The Mexican-American War, during which time Karl Marx was alive. And he basically said, it's good that the Americans took it because those Indians didn't really, weren't doing very much with that land anyway. Oh, fuck Marx. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Yeah. With all, with all that stuff. And, you know, now that I'm hearing this, it's, it's totally the opposite of what it really represents for our people. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but, but uh, to put things in better context. Uh, yeah, no, 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 hey, no. That's what I, that's what I want, actually, with your reaction. You know, that, that's what they, you know, we have to, we have to get into this. We, you know what, it's like the thing about that they say, oh, well, well the anger doesn't bring anything. You know what, uh, even people like Mother Teresa and Gandhi, guess what was motivating them? 
fucking anger. That's what got them. You got even even uh, Martin Luther King. Yeah, he looks all calm and all. That. He was fucking angry. You know. Okay. Then you know, then when it gets down to uh, Malcolm X. Oh. Que calmadito, verdad, el señor? Okay. So you, you you have you have to be aware, you know. Don't don't or oh yeah, well that's all about, all about hate hate. Yeah, you know what? I hate injustice. I hate racism. I hate the condition that my people are in. I hate all the monstrosities that Europeans have done to me and to my people, and c continue to do to us. I really really hate that shit. Because normally what we're talking about, we're talking about racist hate. See, racist hate becomes hate. If you hate, you're bad. It's a class struggle. It's not about colonialism. See, this is all about actually being educated a little bit even beyond Nicantlaca and us. You have to be educated in general. And that's why they make it very difficult for us to even have a dialogue back and forth to strengthen ourselves. Because estamos aquí llenos de pendejadas of the Marxist shit, of the capitalist shit, the white supremacist shit, lo que te dijo tu abuelita, you know, was she an evil person? No, she was saying, no pasión pendejadas that I was taught. That's not what she was thinking. Again, lot, lots of the, the worst racism I've ever heard has come from our own people. More bluntly, I've heard from my own family. I've never heard anything as ugly from white supremacists. So it's a, it's a lot of different things. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you, you have to watch out with the, the Marxist stuff. Believe me. What Karl Marx was writing about, he did that from basically doing research on our societies. Because he looked at Europe and said, man, this is fucked up with all these kings and all this. and They're just dictatorships is all they are. There's got to be another way to do this. We've got to have a different way to have government. We have to have some justice for white people. That's what he was planning. And he investigated everything and he came up with Marxism. Him and Engels, actually, but he gets most of the credit. Uh, and what it when the, what ended up, uh, yeah, the, you know what? Let's be fair. If it wasn't for Karl Marx, we wouldn't have Social Security. We wouldn't have the forty-hour week. We would we would still have children working in factories. I can go on and tell you. I'll be fair. Give give the Marxists their credit. They made the world better. That's why I've, I have been a Marxist sympathizer. I've never been a Marxist. Because certain things never, never worked logically. And I knew the history behind it. But I still, I, I've worked, in a, and I still work with some white Marxists. But when our people become white Marxists, they become white Marxists themselves, and they become white supremacists. Uh, last week, um, I, think, I think Jessica was there, I asked um, Marilena from Univision, um, like how comes um, Univision always tells our people that uh, Spain is a mother country? And she goes, because it is. And I'm like, well, I'm a Nahuatl, this is it for me too? He goes, she goes, like this. She's like, but this is like, kind of like this racist look, like, yes, like saying you're, you're the slave. Yeah. Yeah, but, but that's what she means. She means yeah. it, it is a mother country. Uh, tu madre que te, que te ordena, the one that tells you everything, and that's where you get your culture from, that's where you're going to be, that's your origins, there is nothing else. And then later on, I mean, what them confronted uh, that, you know, that, that it was like a, like a full blood looking uh, reporter from um, Univision. We asked him, how come Univision promotes this Spain as a mother country? And he acted stupid. He acted like he didn't know what, what I was talking about. He goes, it doesn't land though. We don't, we don't, I don't know. I'm like, well, what's your, what's your opinion about that? He goes, oh, I, ha I have no comment. I have no comment. Um. No, as far as uh, the, this whole media thing, there are some of the people who are aware of what we're talking about, but they can't speak about it because it won't be published, it won't go on the air if they were to, to actually speak that truth. 
it, be, it becomes a, a, a big problem for them because they, they will lose their jobs. So it's not like, oh, well, yeah, you're exaggerating. You won't, you won't lose your job. No, they will. There, there have been people who've lost their jobs. I, you remember the, the situation we had a few years back with Eddie Olmos and L'Opinion, uh, where they actually did publish some things, and uh, they got something published, but it turned into a whole big disaster for whoever was involved in that with L'Opinion. Um, it's too long to get into, but that was one example of somebody who had the courage to, to print some of this material. Um, so I don't know if, he, if there was anything else to do. Okay. You, you had a question earlier, yeah. So just, uh, uh, when I was in UC Davis and doing a historical seminar, I was looking to do research. I was looking at published marriage records, and uh, all the time you'd see that the the rates, the, the ethnic groups, the lowest rate of intermarrying with other cultures were always Creoles, were always Spaniards. Uh, there's a book of uh, uh, John K. Chance, it's like something um, It's like race and class in, in Colonial Mexico City, and he shows you right there that these these Spaniards supposedly loved to mix, you know, that they loved, that they were just coming here to, to mix with the natives, not to destroy them, that they hardly ever intermarried. But I think that the historical record shows that it was through concubinage, it was through rape, it was through prostitution, it was very rarely through, you know, uh, actual marriage. Right, through, yeah. through Spanish men seeing themselves as being equal with any people and joining with them as, as in an equal relationship. It was always like, a, it was almost always um, relationships where it, it was unequal. It was Spanish men viewing themselves as superior and using indigenous women as their own prostitutes, as their own sex slaves. Yeah, well, it's like even uh, in Mexico, this is the one I know a lot of. Uh, there is a Criollo little group, and you go to Mexico City, Guadalajara, Monterrey, and you go to the richest neighborhoods, you're going to have actual whites, white supremacists, as a matter of fact. And what they do when they marry, they check out because somebody can look totally Nordic looking and whatever and turns out that he's got a brother that looks full blood Nicantlaca and they don't like that. So they investigate each other when they're going to get married. There's a whole thing. They want to meet your family, not, not just your mom and dad. They want to meet all the relatives. That's their little keeping it pure white. That, that's a very, very public thing in Mexico. No, that's for us. That's for us. That's that's for us to think that way. It's it's not for amongst them. They they know that in order in order to to, to keep uh, keep their wealth, they have to keep it white, pure white. Speaking about Nordic, I've gone into an argument with a fellow uh, employer, with a fellow associate at work one time, and, and this guy was trying to claim that that, however, the Nordic people, that there's caves in Ohio that belong to the Nordic people. And he was insisting that it was Nordic and that the indigenous peoples were not here before. The, basically, he was saying that the white race was here before that. And I've come in contact with these yo-yos every once in a while. So much so that he even started saying that the indigenous peoples in Hawaii were not really indigenous to Hawaii. He even got to that argument, yeah. basically saying, I mean, how do I... How do I confront you? Yeah, you, you don't. You know what? Is there a uh, no, no, no. See, it gets back to kind of a little bit of kind of what was brought up earlier. Let, let, let me just, because uh, 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 I'm sorry, I do get a little bit of a headache from this particular subject. See, we can respond to the African descent people about the Olmecs. We can start responding to the Mormons about how they came here. We can start responding to the whole Kennewick man. We can start responding to all of these different attacks on our rights to our continent. We can, we can spend the rest of our lives dealing with that. It's non-productive. You can have all the proof that you want. It's like on the old McAfrican thing. Von Sernema himself finally admitted that, uh, that again, that that his dates were wrong, blah, blah, and he was, all I was saying that at one point, but no, he was implying that the, the Olmecs were Africans and they originated our civilization. That's what you hear, uh, you, you read on the internet. And you can go on with the Kinoic man, you go, you know what, my personal thing is, I don't even deal with it. Why? Why? 
It's just like somebody saying, uh, oh, uh, I, I have proof that your grandmother was a prostitute. Uh, and uh, not only that, that your, your, your great-grandfather was a, what was a, he, he, he was a cannibal. And I have, why spend your time responding to that? Why? Because you're going to get caught up in pendejadas. We get, I, I, I've reacted to it at the beginning too. Again, there is proof against all this shit, but they're not interested in it. You can show them all the proof. You can show them movies uh, of actual, uh, in Tenochtitlan, that there wasn't a, a great city. You can show them, you know, okay, we went, here it is, you know, uh, we, through time, time travel, we proved there were no, well, maybe you didn't, you didn't go to this place. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's one of those arguments you can't win. And we can't let ourselves get caught up in these arguments. And you can say, oh, but I can't let, just let them speak that way. Well, you know what? If you get into the discussion, which is not really a discussion, uh, it's like getting into that argument about your grandmother was a prostitute. It's like, okay, you, you know she wasn't, but you're going to get into the discussion to try to prove that she wasn't. You know what you're actually doing? You're actually disgracing your grandmother by even giving any credence. Think about it. You actually are giving credence to such a thing. And because oh, you guys are denying the, the, the truth and whatever. Uh, well, uh, you, you know. See, the, the thing is they give us all these distractions. Yeah, go ahead. You want to talk about that shit, but you didn't want to talk about colonialism. That's the way you said colonialism was a long time ago, but then he comes and he wants to talk about this stupid nonsense about the boy. Because that gives them a right to be on this land, and that says we were here before you, so we're not illegals. So yeah, I, know, I know, I know the fucking arguments, but the thing of it is, then we're going to spend the rest of our lives just oh well. Well, you, you weren't here for it. Oh, yes, we were here for it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Inst instead of talking about, how about 95 million people killed? How about, how about uh, the fact that all our land was stolen? How about the great cities that we had? How about the accomplishments of our people? How about, how, we can go on. That's what we need to know. We don't need to know, uh, you, know uh, you know, what was Superman's real name? We don't need to know, you know. I mean, it's got nothing to do with anything uh, of what we're talking about. And you, you can't allow yourself to be diverted or get caught up in these, these arguments. Like people tell me about, oh, I read on the internet. I said, man, I, I stopped reading that shit years ago. Because, yeah, I, I get angry, you know. It's like with us, even when we get, you know, uh, on, on our Mexica movement phone, we get these white supremacist calls and we get the, the vendido calls, and we're at a point, you know, you know what, uh, no caller ID, okay, delete. I don't even listen to it. At, the, at one point, I was like, oh, this idiot, and I would make notes on it. But after a while, you know what, they're all saying the same shit again and again. The vendido shit, the white supremacist shit, again and again. Um, I don't even find it amusing anymore. Yeah. But for, for, I know for some of you, this is all new, you know, and you'll get angry about certain things, and you'll want to respond. Well, what do I respond? In that particular case, there is no point responding. I don't think this is a really high IQ person you're sp speaking with to begin with. I, I don't even know the person. I can tell you. This is not a high IQ person or not a very moral person. So what's the point? See, we... We got to learn, we got to choose our battles. Don't let them choose where you're going to fight. Because if you let them choose, you've already lost. And that's like with us and what we're doing. No, we're not going to talk about us illegals. We're talking about 1492. Uh, yeah, but what about the, 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 the laws that were violated? Yeah, the laws that were violated in 1492. We got to reframe this whole thing. It's not about illegals or SB uh, 1070. It's not about. It's about 1492 and what happened after that, and, and the rapes 
and the enslavements and the theft of our lands and the use of smallpox. What a dishonorable people you are. What a monstrous people you are. Those are the, what we should be pounding and pounding and pounding and pounding instead of, well, Olmex, well, I don't know the details of it. Oh, gee, Kennewick, man, or I don't know. Well, the Mormons and this, or the ten lost tribes of Israel. Da, 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 da. Yeah, uh, the, uh, my grandfather came from Spain. Da, 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 da. You, can, you can put a book this thick of pendejadas. And you can be reading that book the rest of your life. Kind of, that's what we're doing now. Let's wait until the, the, let's be talking about the Lakers. Hey, let's go, let's be talking about uh, El Mundial. Let's be talking about uh, what, kind of, what kind of pot you like. Yeah. Let's be talking about uh, 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 what, what TV show, what's a, the best reality show. Let's go, let's, but that's what we're doing. Hopefully not too much of it here in this room. But in reality, that, that's, that's what the majority of our people are doing right now. We're not meant to be thinkers under white supremacy. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask, okay, can you talk about what's the difference between the Shikha movement? Why the Shikha movement doesn't do dancer? I think, I think that's, a, that's an important issue to talk about. Because I don't want to go back to, the, to whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. I know people always talk about the Shikha movement. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah. Well, well, it's, it's a huge subject, but the quick answer to it is we don't do danza because we respect our ancestors. That's the quick answer. Okay. Um, take a look at what danzantes are doing. I am bailando con la cruz. They're Lord Jesus Christ, and then they are. Or the one that Nel Yolo and I saw out in Baldwin Park, where all the groups of danzantes from the LA area, and they and they got the copal, and they took the American flag to bless it. Or the danzantes that are out there dancing with bleach blonde hair. Or which might report in terms of uh, the the Capitan Aguilar in San Diego going on about. Uh, it's, we are Latinos because we speak Spanish and Spanish is derived from, from the Latin language and that's why we're Latinos. Again, it's kind of like the other argument. You know, it's kind of like, uh, in how many ways are what Danza is doing a bunch of pendejadas, a bunch of sacrilege, dishonoring the warriors dishonoring the rituals and ceremonies of our people. And to claim themselves warriors and you never see them actually confronting or defending. It's a, it's a huge topic, but in the same way that you're not going to convince this other guy about whatever it is, whether it's Kennewick Man, all of, with the people that are into the Dansa, New Age, uh, spirituality and all that, you're not going to change their minds. It's not, there is no point to, you know, we bring it up mostly because there are young people who think that somehow that's part of what Mexica movement is about. Um, and they'll say, well, it's a natural thing. You know, they're, they're doing the dance. You know. Well, you know what? If it's part of folklorico, como el ballet folklorico de Mexico, and they say, well, this is more or less the way we think the danzas were, and, and con luz y humo, and uh, the beautiful colors and all that, to present un folklorico de como eran los aztecas, you know. Well, you know, it's theater. But when you do it at in the streets and to our people and you say this is a sacred dance and you bring in the American flag, Yanas con la crucita. That's sacrilege. That's dishonor. I mean there's more to it, but uh this is one that I, f I find personally I get very emotionally angry at the monstrosity of what's going on with that. <laughs>